Hey, welcome back. Another day, another vlog. How are we all peeps? Uh, good to see you all again this evening. Tuesday, Wednesday night. Yeah, Wednesday night, 5th of Feb. Uh, good day, got a bit done actually. Um, yeah, bike is back together. All done and dusted, all the filming's done for the video. I will be spending the next however long it takes. Uh, editing mode we're in now, so just, yeah. Sleep is the back thing in the mind. Just gonna sit down and get this thing. I think I've got enough in there. Uh, if not, I can come back and do some stuff. I've got the bike here, so I need to start smashing it together and try and nut out a plan for where we're at and what we need. But it looks pretty good. Uh, got a fair bit, went out really well. Bearing's super awesome, so very happy about that. First sponsored video, so I'm sort of really excited about it. And yeah, super, super wrapped to see what I can come up with and hope I can do them proud. Um, yeah, they've done me right by in the past and looking after our fishing team. So um, yeah, gotta make sure I look after them and give them a good video to promote their products. So that's what it's all about. And uh, yeah, I, uh, I tell you what, getting out on the bike, I'm pretty keen to go for a ride now too, so. But that won't be far away once I get some spare time. Do I have any? No. Um, yeah, so I can get that done. Then I can do some more. I probably got to get some house stuff done. I'm going to pull up some grass this week. And I need to get some other videos edited. I've got a big pile of them waiting. So yeah, fair bit happening. No rest for the wicked. Just smash, smash, smash. Radio. Let's talk some news, heaps happening uh, today. Uh, gonna get into the big one first, cameras. Uh, we all know about the Canon rumors lately uh, about the 5R and all the ifs and buts. I've talked about many different aspects of it, about the video doesn't sound right. Uh, well, I've got another, another view for you today. Uh, one of the other boys I follow are saying that yes, well, it actually sounds like Canon are on the right path and gonna release an 8K camera. Uh, some executives from Canon uh, confirmed that they're looking at definitely gonna be 8K for the system. That was in an interview last year, uh, that they're definitely gonna have 8K in the system. Uh, that 1DX3 with a 5K uh, sensor, Basically, if you do the mass on that, the amount of pixels required to do 8K and do 4K at 120 is possible using that same sensor and technology that they're making the 5K with. So it looks like, theoretically at least, uh, that it's a possibility that they have the tech, Canon has the technology to do this. Um, what shape or form the camera is going to come in, if it's just going to be the R, or is this R part of a new range of monster cameras to come out? Uh, looks, look, we don't, I don't think anyone knows that as yet, except the Canon bosses. But uh, basically, I think we're going to see, I don't know if we really need the 8K, but the 4K stuff, the high end 4K 60, 120, all that sort of stuff. That'll be pretty cool to play with, I'm sure, for a lot of people out there. So. And look, <clears throat> sounds like Canon, as we've said many a times in the last couple of months, is gonna have a great 2020. So yeah, definitely something happening there and sounds like it's get, they're gonna be on a winner. So Sony, Pentax, Panasonic, uh, Nikon, they're all gonna be, I guess, the, I'm sure they've got their heads down bum up trying to work out how they're gonna be able to catch Canon already with what they've heard and I'm sure they're all a little bit scared and worried themselves, but I'm, they've, probably the only, they've probably got their own plans in place too that they haven't told anyone. So you never know. Like Apple, you hear about an Apple phone and all these things and they come the day, somehow, some way, they still have something up their sleeve. And I think Canon's gonna be that. You'll hear about all these different rumors and then you'll, some people will be disappointed, but then there'll be something else in there that they add in that'll be really super awesome and I think the only ones that win are us as consumers. They're struggling, so they've got to come up with good product. So as consumers, we've got to, we get the, these, all this fantastic technology. It's just, I guess we're gonna to have to pay for it. Um, 
And it all depends on what scale they're going to come out with these cameras. They might, they might bring out two or three cameras um, uh, at different price levels. The R might just be now the base level, and that might be where they're starting from. So that'd be pretty cool. Um, and that may drop in price again. It already dropped in price over Christmas, the R and the RP by, I think, 500 bucks US. So that might be just setting itself up for the base model. Now, they also did, the, go, when I went through this video, they did talk about how they'd interviewed the guy that from another channel had interviewed the Canon executives and they talked about, will that affect the cinema cameras having 8K and all this? And, and they're, they're not really concerned about that. They, they want to look after the customers. They're going to do it and look out. So very, very cool, uh, very exciting times in the camera world for all. Um, I'm super excited to hear about what's, how that's going to roll into the Canon M50. It's, I'm, uh, I'm definitely a base level user. Uh, even the R at a couple of thousand bucks or whatever it is in Australia, if you buy it brand new from a shop, is still a massive amount of money. So I'm happy with the M50. If they can upgrade that, I'd love to trade this in and get a new model M50, whatever that is. That'd be pretty awesome to me. I love its small size and what it can do for... For me, I guess if I ever hit a million subscribers, maybe I can afford a big camera. But um, until then, Canon M50, beautiful. Right, uh, Fuji, speaking of small compact cameras like the M50, uh, the Fuji has released another camera. Fuji on a bit of a tear in the last oh, six months, I guess. Uh, they have come to the party. They're, they're really forging uh, forwards. The X100V, about three or four tubers, uh, dropped their notes on it today and, and their first release points. Adorama, I went and checked out them. Uh, they released it, portable, great features. Got a 26 megapixel sensor, uh, 23 millimeter lens. I think that is swappable. They didn't really talk too much about swapping over the lenses. I'm not sure of that, uh, that actual model. It is a newer model of an older existing one, so I'm not sure if they're... I think there's existing lenses, I'm not sure they are. 23 mil, it's a crop sensor, so I'm assuming that's 23 is gonna be just a little bit short of a 50, so decent sort of a lens to start with. Strange that it's not a, a zoom one on there, but it uh, seems to be like a, a point and shoot, a very artistic sort of thing. Uh, comes with face and eye detect, uh, 4K 30 frames a second video, so that's pretty awesome video out of a little camera. Two weight tilt screen, but it's only got that one at the back, so pretty much useless for vlogging. Um, it does have an inbuilt USB C charger in the side, so you can just while you're recording, you can have a cord going straight into the side of your camera and have it charged so you never run out of battery. That's brilliant, uh, very smart. Also, another good feature internal ND filters up to four stops, which is not too bad, so that's like your your base level variable ND filter. So that's pretty cool. There's a couple hundred bucks you save. Uh, a 3.69 million dot OLED viewfinder. So very good quality, that one. Now the other thing, it will record, that I thought, or highlight I thought was pretty good uh, for your video guys, is it will record in 10-bit 422 uh, externally to via the HDMI port. So. I guess if you have an Atmos Ninja or an external recorder that can do that, uh, you'll be able to just pump this straight in. So for a small little compact camera, which is pocketable, uh, probably designed to go around and shoot in the streets to get some, you'll be able to also just quickly get some B-roll of some nice fluid 30K. Um, sounds like a pretty versatile little setup. Not sure on the pricing, I didn't check that out. Uh, my apologies. Uh, but yeah, again, Fuji they come out with a few cameras. They are, they are pushing real hard and they're fighting to stay in the hunt for your dollars. So definitely check it out if you're a Fuji fan. Uh, I think also they will have that interna. Uh, it's like the C-Log for Canon, that uh, log profile. They have like an interna. You can, I think, get to that as well with that. So there a lot of great features. If you're a Fuji guy, go check it out. It's definitely worth checking out for you. If you're in the market for a new camera or you just want something portable to go on a holiday with, this might be a great little holiday snapper. Rightio, um, obviously with the coronavirus, I don't have an update tonight on 
the how that's all going. I've sort of left that for a night. I've got a fair bit on, as you can imagine. But I did want to mention that uh, Lou later talked about it tonight, today, about how this the coronavirus is actually affecting, going to affect Chinese companies. Now, at the current level we're at, they're hopefully predicting, or they're, they're predicting they can last up about the 10th of February. They have backup plans in other countries for say Foxconn's talking about it, where they've got enough product here and there to feed out. If it goes past the 10th of February, there's gonna be an issue basically for iPhones, at least Apple, uh, worldwide. So that, that's when we're gonna start looking at the, it affecting other parts of, I guess, the world. So yeah, definitely something, you, I guess you don't think about it because you're more concerned with the poor old people getting sick and passing away and all the uh, tragedy there. But then I guess that flow on effect is, it starts affecting and you're gonna get uh, sanitary services in that Wuhan area, all the electrical things that will start falling, failing, water, people are going to service stuff, machines to keep them running, uh, that filter the water, to filter your uh, oils and, and toiletries and all that. The, the city has to still work, so someone's going to be out working. At the moment, everything is completely shut down, so... I guess the time frame is a short time frame, so they need to get it sorted. So hopefully we get a they get some they have some positive wins in the next few days. But uh, yeah, it uh, may be start affecting. I guess you, uh, the rest of the world, I guess, is going to start feeling after the 10th of February. That's when it'll start rolling into the other aspects of your life. Um, on the baseball side, huge big deal today. Uh, if you're a baseball fan like myself. Uh, Boston Red Sox have traded off uh, to the Dodgers, Mookie Betts and David Price. Uh, David Price, big lefty, uh, great pitcher, awesome pitcher. Uh, I guess probably Twilight, not Twilight, he's, he's not at his top, but he's, he's not at his bottom either, so he's still going to have some great good value. Uh, so the Dodgers get a great left-hander there, but Mookie Betts, like... MVP quality outfielder, ridiculous hitter, just just insane hitter, insane glove, arm, brain, running, the whole works, like a, just a pure MVP player. Uh, that's a massive pickup for the Dodgers, huge. They are, they are trading Jock Peterson over to the Angels to make a little bit of room in their squad uh, for him in the outfield, so that's a massive big thing. So. I'm not sure, they did say cash as well. There's cash involved. There wasn't too much of what Boston's getting back out of this. Don't know if Boston's just trying to offload a heap of big salaries and then do a rebuilding phase or not. That um, generally happens nowadays a fair bit. Where they, they, If they're not winning, well then they just drop the salaries, offload the talent and come back in and come in cheap and then build up again and ready to take on for the World Series. But it'll be interesting to see what happens. Um, they've uh, Mookie's been there for a long time, and they've they've been very much in the hunt, Boston. So I'm sure they have a plan. And yeah, but Mookie bets that's a massive trade. I don't think there'd be too many owners that would want to give him up. Definitely not. Radio, uh, some good news for all us people that have been shafted by Telstra all their lives in Australia. Uh, Oz Telecom regulator has approved SpaceX, Starlink company, that's uh, Elon Musk's satellites in the sky, to operate in Australia. So that basically lets them get going, apply for the licenses so they can start selling stuff in Australia and selling internet packages. Awesome. Can't wait for it. Bring it on. The sooner we get some competition in here to get rid of the just terrible service Telstra Gives out to everyone in Australia, uh, zero customer service, just woeful, and they treat their customers so poorly. Uh, I don't know how many arguments I've had with them over the years. If I had any other option other than Telstra for work, unfortunately, they own all the, the government gave them all the infrastructure when they sold them off, made them private, and now all us guys in the bush that work in mine sites have no option but to use them, so we're stuck. 
So as soon as those satellites come in and anyone, anywhere can get free internet, uh, that'll mean that'll be the end of Telstra. I'd say you're gonna see hundreds of thousands of people just jump ship real quick. Now, basically they've got 240 satellites so far launched up in the sky. Once they get to 360, they're gonna start hooking up connections. That's gonna expand out. They're, I think they're gonna be doing about 120, 60 to 120 satellites per month. They're gonna be put up there and it's gonna go out to 12,000 satellites floating around to give you that full spectrum. Uh, Musk is saying that it's gonna be a very simple plug and play. You plug this thing in your house, point it towards the sky, it'll adjust and do everything it needs to do. And it's gonna be one gigabyte a second. So that's just insane. Telstra, I was saying Telstra in the article, Telstra has uh, already got two, only two satellites up there that they use for the NBN and it's, uh, or sorry, the government has up there for the NBN. My apologies. Uh, and it obviously not very good with only two and we're not the best at building stuff like that. We're good at making technology, we don't know how to use it, it seems a lot. But, um, so yeah, very excited for that. So maybe a year, another two years, and we can finally, finally get some freedom to choose, uh, choose and not have this monopoly hanging over our head. So super, super excited about that. Foxtel are looking though. Uh, they have a lot of satellite stuff and they reckon it possibly is gonna interfere. I'm sure if the telecommunications people are gonna be in control, that they're gonna make sure that none of that happens. Uh, I just think that they're probably more scared about their monopoly as well. With the internet coming through to everyone, they won't be able to sell what they can sell, and they're gonna to have to sharpen their pencils. But uh, yeah, I think it's very good. Great news, we might get some freedom to get some decent, A, get some decent internet, and B, not be stuck with one one carrier forever. Very cool. Anyway, that's it from me. I've got a lot of work to do. Heads down, bum up, edit time. Uh, yeah, cool bananas. Well, that's Wednesday done. Midweek's done, all done and dusted. Two days to go and you get a weekend. I'll let you have two days off after Friday, unless you get to work Saturday, well then that sucks. But uh, hopefully only half an hour or half a day there for your Saturday if you do have to work. So it's not too far away. But uh, I will all, I'll be here tomorrow. Hopefully I'll get to see you guys. Thanks for stopping by. Have a fantastic night. And if you're heading out because it's Wednesday or you're going to bed because you had a big day or just sitting down for a nice feed, Enjoy your dinner, have a nice beer or a glass of red for me, and I'll see you all tomorrow. Cheers.